before we develop this uh, the student class further, let's have a look at uh, how the aliasing effect is occurring at the runtime. So remember from the previous tutorial, we try to call the two versions of the add course record uh, method from the student class. For example, you can see that for the first version, we have to explicitly create the CRR1 and CR2, uh, the two reference variables for storing the two course record objects. And then we have to make two calls to the first version over here by passing the objects directly. In the second version, we actually don't have to create any objects explicitly and pass them as input. All we got to do is simply provide the information that's necessary for us to create the course record objects. And that's the second version. However, for both cases over there, we do have the aliasing occurring at the runtime. And I would like to illustrate quickly to you uh, at a diagram and also how we can test this on the tester. Okay, so now, this is the diagram we have done so far, okay, up to now. So from the, uh, up to the pre uh, previous videos, remember we also set the uh, marks for the third course, which is 3311 to be 84, okay? So this is exactly the diagram we have, uh, we ended up with from the last video. So I'd like to show you only the aliasing phenomenon in this runtime over here. Remember what aliasing is. So now let's just review what the definition is for aliasing. So aliasing is simply, uh, let's put it sh uh, short. Aliasing simply means an object's, an object's address stored, you can say being stored in multiple reference variables. Okay, that's one way to see it. Alternatively, you can try to see from the other direction. You can say the other uh, definition would be, you can say more than one reference variables pointing to the same objects. So both definitions are acceptable. So you should really know uh, uh, how uh, how each uh, each one should be interpreted. Okay. So let's have a look at uh, how aliasing is occurring at the runtime uh, of what we have got so far. Okay. There are two occasions of aliasing over here. So now you can see that. Let's see the first one. You can see that we first of all we got CR one, which is pointing to this particular objects, and then we also have S dot uh, courses and then at position zero and then it also points to this particular objects so that's the first occasion of aliasing okay that's the first one okay so how do we test this it's really easy to test uh it's aliasing because uh these two uh expressions basically refer to the same objects which means the same address in the memory so what we can do is we can simply say cr1 on the one end and also s dot courses at position zero and then dot uh actually just uh, that's it so cs dot courses at position zero also refer to uh, so which refers to this error over here. So it's also referring to the same uh, objects, okay? If they refer to the same object, that means these two addresses are exactly equal. Okay, that's how we test it. Let's do it right away, okay? So that's what we can do. So let's say uh, over here, so now let's uh, test out quick tests on aliasing, okay? So now you can simply say uh, CR1 and S dot courses uh, zero point to the same uh, objects, the course record objects. So is that true or false? How do we how do we test? We can simply let's put a parenthesis to force the order of the evaluation. We can say CR1 equals equals, which is an address equals equals S dot courses at position zero. Okay, that's what we can do, right? And then let's execute this test. Uh, uh, let's see what we got. Okay, so now it's building the Grado. And then after it's built, we can see 
if that's true or false. We expect to see true. Okay, over here you can see quick test on aliasing and CR1 and S star courses at position zero point to the same objects, true. Okay, similarly, now if you see from the diagram, if I try the following, if I try, so we know that this should be true. What about CR1? Uh, let's try another one. Okay, what about CR2 equals equals S dot courses at position zero. Are these addresses the same or not? In, uh, apparently not, right? Because you can see CR2 is referring to this particular object over here, and then S that courses at position zero is uh, referring to this separate object here. So the addresses are not the same. So we expect to see false. Okay, let's have a quick look. And then we can try the following. So now CR2 over here and S dot courses at zero point to different objects. Point to different objects. Okay, there are different ways you can phrase it. Let me let me try to phrase it for you. Okay, uh, which means the same thing. So let me try the first one. They point to different objects. How can we see that? So that means CR two is not equal to S dot courses at position zero. Okay, and then similarly we can also try this. So this one we expect it to be true. Uh, Okay, so this one should be true, and this one we also expect it to be true because they point to different uh, addresses. Uh, they store different addresses. Let me do a third one for you, which is equivalent to the second one. Uh, CR2 and S dot courses zero point to the same objects. Okay, so now that means I simply change this to be equals equals, right? You can see that in one case, I use explanation equal, not equal to. And the second case, I use equal equal. So they cannot be true at the same time. They cannot be false at the same time either. It, one must be true, the other one must be false, okay? So this one here, we expect to see false, but they are result are equivalents. Okay, let's just try that very quickly and then see what we have. Okay, so what we have is, you can see that CR2, and they point to different objects, it is the case. So that's true. And uh, these two point to the same objects where we use equal, equal, that should be false. Okay. So now that's about the first occasion of aliasing. What about the second one? The second one, let's try again. The second one, let's see over here, let's use uh, maybe uh, orange here. Okay, so you can see CR2 is referring to this particular course record objects. Do we have any other path that's also referring to the same objects. Apparently there's another one. You can see there's another incoming arrow into this box over here, right? So now let's try that. So we have S dot courses, which refer to this array over here at position one. And at position one is referring to this particular course record objects. So this is the second, uh, occurrence of aliasing for uh, in our case. So how can we test this? Okay, so now by the way, the previous one, th uh, this should be uh, false, right? Okay, that's one from the previous example. Okay, so now let's try another one. So now what about we say, uh, let, I'm running out of space, let me put it here. If I say CR2, which is here, equals equals S dot courses at position one. What do I expect to see? I should expect to see true, right? Okay, because they point to the same objects. And also, what about if I say CR1 equals equals S dot courses at position one? Are they refer, so CR1 is pointing to this object over here and uh, S dot courses at position one is pointing to this object over here. Are they referring to the same objects? Apparently not, so that should be false. That's what we expect to see. Okay, let's just uh, see this in the test here very quickly. And then I will recap very quick, uh, uh, briefly. Okay, so now, so now let's say, let's uh, be careful. So now we get CR2 and S dot courses at position one. They point to the same objects. And this one we expect to see true. Okay, so CR2 
and courses and position one. You can see the Java code itself is very neat and concise, but you have to know exactly what it really means behind the scenes. And the only way you can understand completely about what happens behind the scene is by drawing diagrams and visualize the object structure. It's a very important technique. So then we can say CR, CR1 and S dot courses and position one, they point to different objects. And we know that because there's no aliasing between these two uh, objects, okay, CR1. So now we also expect, expect to see true. And also the third one, CR1 and S dot courses and position one, they point to the same object. It is not the case. So it's just uh, another way of saying this. So CR1 and Okay, let me just remember to put one back. Okay, you can see these two tests are completely uh, symmetric. So we're just doing uh, the same test uh, on different occasions of the aliasing. Okay, so now we should also get true, true, false. Let's see if that's really the case. Okay, launch the tester. Okay, we also get true, true, false over here. Okay, so now, so let's go back here. So in this video here, basically from what we ended up with from the last video, we basically want to see how many occasions there are for aliasing. Aliasing is a very unique scenario for object-oriented programming because the addresses can be copied over by using assignments. So whenever you actually try to use reference assignment, for example, you can see that in the student class over here, in both versions, you can see version one, and version two, which in turn calls version one. So they are basically using the same reference assignment over here. So you can also make a, a comment over here. So this is a reference assignment, which creates a new occurrence of aliasing. Okay, that's something uh, uh, which is added from the previous uh, example, just a uh, new insight into this. Okay, so you can see we are copying some address over here, which can be CR1, which can be CR2. And also we are copying that over into the particular slot in the array. So we're creating aliasing. Okay, and one subtle detail here you should note. So you can see that I didn't put anything like, you can see that this actually another scenario of aliasing, you can say CR is pointing to the same objects as pointing to by S dot courses uh, at position two over here, right? You can see another two arrows, but it's actually not possible to test. You can see that if I try the following, okay, I'll just illustrate to you. If I say S out over here, I'll just put an expression here. If I simply say CR equals equals S dot courses at position two, you can see that we have the red over here for CR. We cannot resolve symbol CR, which means CR as a variable is not defined in the context of uh, the student tester class. Why? Because CR, even though we draw that in the diagram for illustration, but think about where, uh, where CR was defined. You can think about, you can think it this way. In the version two, uh, let me just point to you. You can see in version two of the add uh, course record mutator method, which is here, which is defined over here, you can see that the CR over here is created completely locally uh, inside this method, okay? So what we can say is the new course record object is object's address is stored in a local variable, CR. Notice that variable CR is only visible within this method, which means outside this method here, you cannot refer to it, okay? And the reason that we could refer to CR1 and CR2 previously was because CR1 and CR2, they were defined in the context of the student tester. So notice that, that's why I didn't put a test for CR. But you notice that conceptually, there's really also aliasing going on here. It's just that CR is, o is only making sense only in the in the uh, uh, in the moments when we try to call the add uh, course record method, the second version, only at that moment there. Once we finish executing that particular method, CR is gone. Local variables will, all, will always be discarded after you execute the methods. Okay, so just subtle point. This test 
does not compile because because CR is a local variable of at course record method. Okay, that's something uh, you, sh you should really note. Okay, okay, I think uh, that's about it. So basically, for this particular video, you should really try to see how the aliasing effects is occurring. Once we add the uh, third model class into the context, we'll see that the aliasing effects is still going to occur, but in a more complicated way.